Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to another Babylon video. This is part two of our hex tile demo series, our video series on creating this together. This awesome hex tile grid where I can click on any one of these hexes and get a 50-50 chance of generating procedural noise-based islands. How cool is that? So this is part two. Let's dive in right where we left off. In the last video, we had set up all of the groundwork to, we loaded in our asset with an asset container and set up the groundwork to be able to pick and interact with the individual tiles. So we're going to continue on that right now. Uh, previously, I had said that if pick result.picked mesh, if I had picked a mesh, then throw an alert that says, congratulations, you picked a hex tile. So I've now gotten rid of that alert. And instead, I'm going to start the process of being able to play at the animation group that's associated with this particular mesh that was picked. And here's how I'm going about doing that. First, I'm going to get all animation groups in the scene. Now, this is thinking forward ahead to when we have lots and lots of tiles. So get all of the animation groups, set them to a variable called anim groups. Then I'm going to loop through and, uh, the animation group, uh, sorry, anim groups to get all of the animation groups in the scene. I'm going to loop through that. And then I'm going to do a check. Now this check is pretty cool, but I need to show you how it works visually. I'm going to get uh, the, the an animation group, the first one in the loop. And then I'm going to get the first targeted animation inside of that animation group. So the way that this works is an animation group is a collection of targeted animations. A targeted animation is a bunch of curve data that is applied to a specific target. So what I'm saying is, okay, as I loop through this current animation group that I'm looking at, give me the first instance, the first targeted animation, because I just want to check the first one. You could do the second one as well, but we'll just say the first one. And then get the target. So we remember that a targeted animation has a specific target that that curve data will be applied to. And in this case, it is this uh, parent of the meshes, this clone of hex tile, okay? And so what I'm going to do is say, is the anim group first targeted animations target equal to the picked meshes parent? So what I'm doing there is because I'm picking a mesh, and the animation is applied to the mesh's parent, I'm going to say, give me the mesh's parent to compare and see if that's the target. Boom, okay, was that a lot? It was a little bit to handle, I admit. Basically going over it one more time, we have an animation group. I take the first targeted animation and I look at the target. In this case, it is this parent node. That is the target of the animation group. Then I'm gonna say, is that equal to the parent of the mesh that I picked? And if it was, then go ahead and play that. And this is what that looks like. Boom, it plays the appropriate animation group. How cool is that? Pretty cool way to actually compare and contrast a picked mesh versus an animation group. Okay, so we have a problem. The problem here is that I can actually click this tile over and over again. And what's actually technically happening is the moment I click, the tile flips back over and then animates again, and then flips back over and animates again. And that's actually not what I want. I don't want to uh, interact with a tile. Once it's flipped once and I've either displayed an island or no island, that tile is picked, it's done. And so we're gonna do a little check here to say, uh, I'm going to get all of the sibling meshes related to the one that I picked. And here's how we do that. I say pick result dot picked mesh. So the picked mesh dot parent, and then give me all of the child meshes. Okay. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, let's say I picked clone of top. I'm actually saying, give me the parent and then give me a list of all of its children. So now I have all of the siblings, all of the meshes related to this hex tile. And I'm then going to simply loop through that and say, is pickable equals false. So now they're no longer pickable after they've been picked once. And here's how that looks. I click on it, it animates over. I cannot click on it again. Awesome. So the next thing that we need to do is set the groundwork for determining whether or not this hex tile has an island or not. And this is super, super simple. As easy as doing a check to say, if a random value that we're gonna generate is greater than 0.5, that random value is gonna be between zero and one. If it's greater than 0.5, Congratulations, you are an island. If it's below 0.5, you are not an island. And in this case, I'm just going to throw an alert that says you found an island if that condition is met. And here's how this works. Let's see how many times it takes me to find an island. 
Didn't get one that time. Let's try it again. Got one the second time. So there you go. 50-50 chance of generating an island. That's it for part two of this video. Really, really simple. Remember, we are going through all of the steps to create the big hex tile grid. And we're setting the groundwork here in these first couple videos. I hope you've enjoyed something and got something out of this video and the series as a whole so far. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any future updates. We add videos quite a bit to this channel. Uh, every week we try to, and uh, we just wouldn't want you to miss anything. And hopefully this content has been helpful to you. Uh, and so we'll see you in part three in the next one. All right, see you later.